remember last week when I said that. You are watching We Host Sports. I am watching We Host Sports. It's a hard work out of 2014. We Host Sports. We Host Sports. It's all in round. Sponsor for 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 round. Great from best ball from ball to indoor outdoor games for you. No matter if you're your taller, short, it's all in round. Sponsor for round. America and around the world. Welcome to another edition of We Host Sports. My name is Raul Alonso and I'm your host. Today we have a very special show for you. We're going to be talking about Michael Sam and him being drafted in the NFL. We're going to be talking about the Clippers controversy on Game 5. We're also going to be talking about the Kings and the Ducks. And we're also going to be talking about, of course, the World Cup with less than a month away. So let's get right into it and welcome our co-host. Mr. George Rumis. Hi. And, <coughs> hi. Hi, Axel. How are you? Good. <laughs> so let's go right into it because we got a lot to cover and we have to say a lot of stuff and talk about a lot of stuff. First, let's, let's cover some gay sports. What's happening with the uh, varsity uh, gay league? You know, there's a lot of stuff that, that that's happening when our director decides we can draw the clip and we can talk about it. Uh, yeah, we have Braingasm Trivia Night. It's Friday, May 30th. Um, teams of four, 40 a person. Um, it's from 8.30 to 10 p.m. at the gym bar, and there's a cash prize. I hear it's really great, so y'all should go. Yeah. And next we have Trampoline Dodgeball. If you love trampolines and you love dodgeball, they put the two together. It happens Friday, March 28th at 8.30, 25 a person. Jump up and hit your friend in the face with your balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're going to hit somebody with the balls, then hit them with the bowling ball. That worked for so much. <laughs> but yeah, they have the bowling league or not. It's two leagues. It's one on this side and one on the west side. <clears throat> so they play in Chateau Lanes on Monday and El Dorado Lanes on Wednesday. And then we have the doubles uh, tennis league. Even more balls. Um, it's eight <laughs> week uh, league doubles play from 7 to 10 p.m. at Poinsettia Park. No, uh, it starts June. And of course, lastly, we have the VGL <coughs> West Hollywood uh, <coughs> uh, paintball team. So if you really are frustrated, you can go out and shoot your friends in the face with <laughs> even more balls. Yeah, and then we have the basketball with some more balls. And they have an eight week uh, session at Poinsettia Park from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And then they will have an after party. So they're signing up right now. There you go. There you have it. So that was a quick report in six different gay sports that are happening right here in L.A., all done by our good friends on Varsity Game League. And, com. and that's right. a wrap. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit too early for a wrap, -up, but, you know, there was a lot of crying this week. Oh, yeah. I, I, I cried when the Dodgers lost Wednesday. Yeah, and, <laughs> I, and I cried when Michael Sapp got signed with the Rams. The, the L.A. Rams? Well, yeah. it's the L.A. Rams, and for your information, the L.A. Rams 
were the first team that signed an African-American player. And they're the first ones to sign uh, a gay footballer. So like the only I problem say, is they're in St. Louis. In the, well, but they got a lot of fans from L.A. Now they're oh, yeah. that now that's a, it, the Rams should move to L.A. So <laughs> Come back to the Coliseum. But, I know we have a clip when... When he when he got that call from that uh, San Luis coach, the locker room, yeah. no. What it did was well, it helped them been, the best seasons had. in Missouri history, 12 wins, yes. which they had never had before. Okay, as we told you, this is the moment where Michael Sam got the news that he is going to be a member of the St. Louis Rams. There you see him on the phone, and there you see the raw emotion. We've seen this so many times over and over again for so many players. Shells were going to start coming out from everywhere, and the first one they did something was the Dolphins, uh, uh, Jones, Don Jones, he put some negative tweets about Michael, and all he did was OMG and, and horrible. That's the words that he posted on Twitter, and the Dolphins immediately came down on him, and As they, they, find him, they find him. And now they're not allowing him to come to play until he goes to a special training to know how to deal with that. I mean, they were the ones that were in a big scandal last year. That's why they had to come out. So what do you guys think about all of the bad comments and, and what we just said? I think it's a little ridiculous. I mean, it, like, it seems like people are putting too much attention on the fact that they kiss. Like, so what? They kiss, you know. It, well, it wasn't even a big kiss. He didn't walk over and tongue him, you know. It was a little. So what it was a little. Pe- yeah, it, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I'm just saying it was a little peck, big deal. What I got an issue with is that everybody kisses their mothers or whatever. He doesn't have his mother or his father to kiss. No. Who is his next closest to Ken? That's his. Uh, all I, Ken, though, right? Case uh, uh, all right? I got to say <laughs> is if I was a defensive player and I got signed, I don't care if I'm signed 249 like Sam was. If I'm going to make those millions of dollars, I'm grabbing the nearest person I have and I'm going to smooch them. Well, what do you guys think about that? <laughs> what do you guys <laughs> not, think? Not the Charlie, no. <laughs> what do you guys think about, about – that situation that he was drafted 249 six before the end of the draft and all of the gay organizations have come out and they said that if they would have not drafted they would have had a big last on their hands because of racial discrimination and all this other stuff so actually san louis saved the nfl and look at that he's second on selling jerseys just to john Mansell. so that tells you that he ain't going nowhere, that there's a big mar- gay market out there for sports, and they got exploited. And, and what do you guys think about that? Well, I'm glad he was drafted. I, I don't know too much about the St. Louis defense. I know it is the same kind of defense. They run a 3-4, but with a 4-3 scheme. I don't know if Sam can transition into a 4-3 scheme. It is quite differently. 
But uh, I'm so disappointed he didn't go to the Chargers. That, that is my disappointment right there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you, what do you think about this whole thing? Well, he should have been put into a team. Like, if he did, I would be, like, kind of angry, you know. Because he's, like, the first openly gay NFL player. And people have been, like, very homophobic in the NFL. And it seemed like there's been a lot of negativity in sports when it comes to a lot of gay players. So that's why we've had gay sports leagues, you know, to combat it, especially with people who are in the closet and still dealing with it. So I'm really glad that he got into it. And I'm really glad he's also, like, you know getting into the big time, and hopefully more people will come out. And, and, and of course he was drafted. He was the number one defensive player in the and SEC. The, and, right, right, right. And a lot of people are complaining why he went into the 249 when he oh. should have been drafted on the third or fourth round. But they think that because he came out before, that that really hurt him. And a lot of teams were hesitant because they were all thinking what's going to happen in the locker room. Well, 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 the draft doesn't quite work like that. Remember, keep in mind uh, that the worst teams get the first picks. So the people you see, like debate on Clowney, number one draft pick, he's going to a terrible team right now. And the, and the Texans, they were pretty much dead last in the NFL. So uh, it, remember, when you go higher on that dra lower on that draft, you're getting teams that are actually doing well, and you're adding to their stock. And, and, and it doesn't matter, it's like a college degree, it doesn't matter which way you're, uh, you're going. I mean, I mean, it doesn't matter how good your grades are or whatever, you know, as long as you get that piece of paper, and he got that piece of paper. And he got more than that piece of paper because guess who is behind him? The big O! The big O! Oprah! Oprah is behind him! Yes, she did! She signed a deal with the San Luis Rams to let him do a documentary through this whole process. Never have we heard this before. I didn't even get a chance to talk to him. Oprah just jumped and took it away from me. What's wrong with you, Oprah? What is wrong with this picture? Oprah, I, I cannot stand to watch you. If I see you on the street, I will moon you. <laughs> wow, like she hasn't been mooned before. <laughs> so you're over here laughing, but this is a big deal yeah. for the big O to support him oh, again. Yeah. Yeah, Come on. definitely. Like a lot of people follow what Oprah sells. Oprah, uh, yeah, Oprah sells, right? You know, they are now selling like you know Oprah chai tea at like Starbucks. There's an Oprah book club. You know, she's really big, and I think it might actually help. You know, um, Michael Sam in the story and what he has to do and his struggles become even more into the big time because more people would watch. Well, I already know that's going to help him because San Luis is not going to fire him when mm -hmm. that big O is behind. Hello? <laughs> and you got all these cameras filming all over the place? Oh, no. Oprah had her own cameraman right there where we saw one of those cameramen that were there and that interview when he got called. That was Oprah's guys there filming already that for the documentary. So... Big ups to her and big ups to Mike and, and you know, San Luis. You can't fire him. Hello. Oprah with the big money will shut down San Luis. <laughs> yes, she will. <laughs> no. I, so, I've said my piece. <laughs> so moving right along, the Clippers are playing today. Oh. They're playing tonight for the, the sixth game. They're down 3-2. to two, And I'm believe that they were robbed completely. Everybody in the sports world believes that they have been robbed. Oh, yeah. You know, and so what do you guys think about the situation? I think the refs blew it, really. Well, it, it's not that they blew it. it. It's just that they felt bad that they were that they missed a foul call. It should have been a foul call on the Clippers, but they didn't call it. And, the, and then when the ball went into discovery, they said, okay, th th we didn't call the foul. So we're just going to give the ball to OKC, and uh, it's just hope for the best because they were supposed to get the ball anyway. So it's that's the way I see it, you, you know. But that was the old rule. I know. You know. That was the old rule. They implemented this new television and new cameras to, you know, to dissect this. Yeah. And they were they went and looked at the uh, footage and they, they saw that the, the OKC mm -hmm. player hit the ball last, and it should have gone to the Clippers, and the Clippers should have won the game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm mad. I'm mad because we lost again. Either though I'm a Lakers uh, fan, Clippers 
I'm supporting you right now, yeah. and it hurt me. It hurt me deeply that we yeah. lost. You know what? What do you think? I, I you think, think they were robbed too? Yeah, kind of. Like you know, you're supposed to if there's a new like on um, protocol, you're supposed to follow it through. You know, you can't just ditch it for the old way all of a sudden just because you feel like it or whatever. You know, you have to stick with what's there, what has been implemented, and follow through. And if it's um, something that changes the like the score. Or if it changes, you know, who wins, that's a really big deal. And that's kind of like robbing a team, you know. Well, there's two things that I want to touch about and I want to ask you. First of all, George, I wanted to ask about uh, the situation with the Clippers and, and, and Sterling. Ah, yes. They are. The Clippers have really started to distance themselves from Sterling yeah, a lot. But now with this situation that just happened, the rumors are that the NBA wants to out the Clippers. So that's why they had the referees do this bad call so that the Clippers will lose and then no more See, Sterling I, I, communications I, I, and it was Sterling will go to the back burner. I, I don't know. If, Which is kind of stupid. Yeah, I, I don't know if they went that far. But, it, yeah, I, I, I just really think it was a blown referee call. I mean, I know I was watching Charles Barkley and, and he, he got it completely. He said, you know, the, the refs made the right call. No, the refs made the wrong call. And, and, and so Steve A. Smith and everybody been saying that it was the bad call. And, and you know exactly what happened to that uh, Clippers coach. Oh, Tell yeah. us what happened. To he that was coach. fined 25 grand. Now, do you think that's that's uh, good to do? 25 grand for for talking about defending your team like no. that? Well, no. I mean, it's not that he, was, he wasn't defending his team. It's just, you know, it's a rule where you can't publicly criticize the referees. The referees. And I, I, I would have paid the money regardless. Oh, they, yeah. It up. Pardon my language. They did. They effed it up. He, and and uh, uh, he, but but yeah, this isn't the first time this has happened to Doc Rivers. Actually, he was fined last year at the uh, for the for the Celtics for doing the exact same thing, criticizing the refs. And, and you know, I gotta tell you, if the referees really blow it, and I'm making the money Doc Rivers has had, which is you know millions and millions of dollars, one one of these days, you know, I am gonna sacrifice a little twenty five grand to uh, you know defend my team and say, hey, you know, you guys shouldn't be doing this. Well, staying in that subject with uh, Mr. Sterling, you know, he went on a rampage and he talked again. Oh, he supposedly God. gave an apology to everybody that he was sorry and nobody was giving him a chance. And let me guess. And he, he uh, even he's... cry about his girlfriend, which was like sad to see an 80-year-old man cry about his girlfriend. But, you but, know, he really bashed Magic Johnson this time well, around. Well, he just, like, he, every time he opens his mouth, he just sticks his foot in there. That's all he does. He's just right, right in his mouth. Just there goes his foot. And I know we have a clip. What Magic respond whenever our director has it ready, he can play it so that our viewers can see how Magic react to all of this crapola. You know. Talking about the first recording that surfaced, the recording that started it all. When you first heard the the audio tape that was released mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, what did you think? Well, I was just. I was blown away. I was. Uh, I couldn't believe that he had said those things. First of all, made those statements, those racist statements, and then you know, threw me in. Don't bring him to my games, and so you personally attacked me, and so and I I had known Donald not very well. I knew him. I've met with him three or four times. Been to his office. How, I mean, so you were you guys friends? Were you yeah, acquaintances? I would, say, I would say we were friends. Uh, I, my first trip when I got here in L.A. over 35 about 35 years ago, Dr. Bus took me to his beach house for his annual beach house party. Mm -hmm. You know. In the summertime. So that was one of the first things that I did. So f to reflect back to that, to these statements he made about myself and minorities, um, it was it was just disappointing. It was, I was in disbelief that he would say these things. And then, you know, to throw me into this situation, I don't know the young lady, barely know Donald, so now I'm caught in the middle of this uh, love affair, whatever they have, and so it was it was sort of disappointing. But I had to respond in terms of, okay, you don't want me to come to your games, I won't come to your games. You don't have to worry about that. But also I was upset because he threw minorities in, African Americans, Latinos, into this situation, and so I had to speak up. Look, I'm one of the leaders in the black community, so I can't let anybody attack our people and not respond. 
And so that's why I responded. When, first of all, you, you said uh, you were photographed with the Vista Viano. You are probably photographed with... Millions of people. Millions of people. You, do you know her? He, he claimed in this interview that I did with him the other day, he said you, you, you knew her, you knew her well. These are the facts, Anderson. I never met this young lady. I took a picture with her probably. I looked like at a Dodger game. That's it. That's all I know of her. You know, and then he says, I'm trying to set him up. How am I trying to set you up? Right. One of the things he said in the interview, and in fact, let me, let me play that part, because he said uh, to me that you called him up he doesn't have your number, he didn't call you. You called him up after the tape was released and told him to kind of lay low, don't say anything public. I want to play that. Magic Johnson, you know, has made a public comment. What, do you have something to say to him? What, what can I say to him? He, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm hurt, but it doesn't matter. You're hurt that he, that he said that he spoke out publicly? I'm hurt that he called me up and he said, don't do anything. Wait until you hear from me. Then somebody called me s later and said he doesn't want to be involved. And then he released a tape that I said to him, that I talked to him in confidence. These are the facts. I was sitting in my office. I get a call from Donald Sterling. He I, called you. He called me. I took the call. Apparently he has your phone number. Yes, yes. His assistant called my assistant, and she put him through. And this is what happened. He asked me to go on the Barbara Walters show with him. This was, what, a week this ago, a week and a half a ago? ago. Because he met with Barbara Walters on a Friday. Exactly. A week and a half ago. It was before that. I told him I wouldn't do it. I said, the number one thing you need to do, which you haven't done, is apologize to everybody and myself. I'm, I, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. So he wanted you to go on with Barbara Walters sitting next to him? Sitting next to him. To kind of give him cover? Or? Exactly. So I said no. Then I told him, I said, Donald, you should consult with your attorneys. I said, this thing is a big thing. And you should deal with your attorneys and let them advise you on what to do. But I said, you need to go public and apologize to everybody. How did he respond? Well, I, I apologize later. Uh, but I want you to go on this show. He, he was adamant about me going on this show with him. And I told him, no, I wouldn't do it. And that's what happened. That's it. And then I called Adam Silver, our great commissioner, and told him what had happened. You told, told Adam Silver that Donald Sterling had called you? He just called. And so I wanted him to know that it happened so he wouldn't be blindsided either. Right. And so, and then I called all my people to let them know Donald Sterling had just called me. So, he responded to uh, Anderson Cooper. Uh, he went and he did an interview, and that was the last interview he's going to do, do about this uh, Sterling guy. And he wants to talk about basketball because basketball players have been great. They have been the best series in so many years. So, what do you guys, uh, what is your opinion on that with Magic? and defending himself and defending uh, minorities. I think that's a good thing, you know. People need to stand up for themselves, especially because, you know, what Sterling did, and, you know, he was talking about magic and how he was promiscuous, which kind of seems hypocritical because he kind of cheated on his wife. <laughs> many, 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 many times. <laughs> <laughs> many, 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 many times. Ex-wife. Oh, ex-wife now, right? A straight wife. <laughs> oh, yes. But it's like, you know, why are you talking about that? And he keeps on bringing up, you know, um, Magic Johnson's, you know, HIV status, you know. He didn't even knew. He called him, he had AIDS. AIDS. He didn't yeah, even like, do his research. It's like, he's such an idiot. Yeah, and it's like, seems really like, you know, hypocritical. And he really shouldn't be talking about magic at this point. I don't think so, but what are we going to do? We, we got to move because we got another thing that's happening in less than a month. Oh, and yes. it's big. Wait and it's huge. And it's the biggest thing ever. I, 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 that's it for the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a uh, it, 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 lot of parts of the world is bigger than the Olympics. We're talking about the World Cup in Brazil. Brasilia. In Brazil. And we have a little uh, part of, of the song and some footage what they're promoting, how they're promoting that our director can show and then we'll come back and touch on it because we got dressed for the occasion. Roll it. These comments. That's wrong clip. Oh, right clip. Thank you very much, director.
got it. We want to talk about it. We've oh been, yes, we've been trying to talk about it for the longest, but all these scandals and stuff has not. Yeah, I, I'm stuff. not even in a tie today. I'm, I'm wearing, I know. I'm, I'm wearing the uh, my my old. Uh, uh, Favorite soccer team, Liverpool. 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 Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and, and, and it's and now they have the standard charter, but now you know back then it was Carlsberg, which is a beer, which I like. <laughs> but you know they just lost it. They had a chance to win that championship oh, this they time, did. and they blew it completely. They but, did. You know, we're not talking about them. We're talking about well, well, they did. Thirty-two nations. They are going to face each other for the biggest prize in the world. And you know what I have here with me right now? You have it. Statistics of. Who's betting what and when, and and if they're gonna have an octopus this time, like that? <laughs> I uh, I'm just gonna give it to you. Okay, Axel, rock. Give us the rock. Yeah. Well, who do you think? Who, who do you want to win? Who do you think is gonna win? Um, who I'm not very Brazil, certain. Brazil, U.S., uh, oh, Mexico. Oh, probably like Brazil or Mexico. Well, let's see. Oh. If we if you were to go to Mexico, uh, it would be 125 to one odds. And and if you were to go to Brazil, it's probably like. Three to one odds. See? Mm -hmm. See, don't bet on Brazil. They are going to lose, and if you, even if they win, you're not going to make any money. Well, but you know how they put so much pressure on their team? Oh, yeah. That if they don't win in Brazil, there's literally people that will kill themselves. They well, have you, killed you, themselves for any little tournament well, we, as long as Brazil loses. Well, you used to be a professional soccer player. Tell me, how... When you beat a team, when you, when you were playing an away team and you beat the home team, how bad was the soccer riot afterwards? It was bad. It was bad. You couldn't even get in the bus. You got in the bus and they were outside throwing rocks at the bus, shaking the whole bus like this. It was horrible. But that's what you do in a World Cup. Everybody knows where they're staying. And like if Brazil plays Germany, they're going to sell girls. To, to where Germany is staying, so they can distract them, so they will lose all their legs and strength, and, they, and then Brazil can win. That's how they do it. They do it in the NBA. They do it in soccer. They do it in baseball. Everybody does it. Well, I'm going to go with my pick here, and I'm going to go with England. It's 28 to 1 odds. They have very good odds. They got pretty good so odds. So if, if I were to bet $5, 5 times 28, you know, that's pretty good. Uh, Germany. You know, they actually had a, a gay player on the team. His name, let's see, I have the name here. It wasn't You're Hel absolutely right. It, it wasn't Helmut von Schnitzel. No, that's that's no, the name. No, because I, just... I can't pronounce that name. It, his no. name was it was Thomas Hitzpegler. Thomas Hitzpegler. And no, there is no there is no SS in his name. Okay, well, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know... You got some good teams there. Oh, in fact, uh, okay. You know, the United States is not that far. They hire a really nice coach. Oh, and yeah. And they've been in a row lately. It but, was so tough when he came in. He came in, and people thought that they had earned their spot. And the coach literally took the names of all of the jerseys and told everybody, everybody starts from scratch here. I don't care about your name. I don't care nothing. Everybody has to by, by the way, it out the, of their hearts. These United States... They didn't close a couple. 125 to 1 odds. So if I were you, ladies but and gentlemen, go to your favorite casino in Las Vegas and place a bet. And who are you going to go? England, 28 to 1 odds. You know, the African teams really have some great teams. Uh, well, let's see. You know, uh, and, and just their odds are so out of the world, but... They have some great teams. A lot of their players play in the Europa oh, League. Yeah. So, you know, because they don't have that many professional leagues over. But, yeah, well, that's normally what happens. And we, we have a minute and 30 left. And we haven't touched on the Kings. And I just want to touch on the Kings because the Kings came back. And they are 3-3. Three to three! I thought they were dead in the water. I said Kings are dead in the water. I did. I, I, we I, said it twice. I know. And they have proven us <laughs> wrong. And they have come back. And you got the stick. And you had the helmet. Shame of yourself for going against the Kings, our team that has brought us the championship before. How dare you, uh, George? Well, I, 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 well, I originally thought it was going to be the Bruins, but they're out. They were beaten by the Canadians. Yeah, the Canadians who I have the, the worst defense. They decided to keep their coach. But that's okay. As long as the Canadians play against the, the Kings in the finals, that'd be okay. So, uh, Axel, what do you want to say? We got a few seconds left. Uh, Anything you're going to tell our viewers? Oh, yeah. There's going to be a gender closing swap for transgender youth at SMC uh, June 2nd. So come and donate clothes for transgender youth who can't afford clothes. Oh, I got plenty of clothes. And, George, anything you want to say? Yes, the Dodgers lost yesterday 13-3. to 
And, and uh, uh, they're losing or they're winning right now? I, I can I tell you. I'm just real. Things. I can't see the games. I have to listen to it on my freaking radio. Oh, well, yeah. uh, that's right, because you don't have that right cable channel. No. So, you know, we'll see you next week. Same channel. Same bat time. Same, same bat, bat channel. Time, probably different crew, but we love you all. Hasta la vista. Great show. That was good. <laughs> yeah. I really love the opening.